We thought we'd nailed our bucket list after burning up Johannesburg's Kailami Grand Prix circuit in the new Porsche 911 Turbo S. But all that was blown out of the water after riding shotgun in the latest 911 GT3 RS with works driver Jörg Borgmeister. Sure enough, if I'd have thought the blindingly quick Turbo S was as good as it could get, the 911 GT3 RS soon proved to be another kind of weapon entirely. This is the 911 you buy when the already brilliant GT3 isn't quite enough. It's absolutely menacing in the metal, looking like it has absolutely no place on public roads, and yet nothing you see here on this car is there for show. This massive adjustable carbon fibre rear wing generates up to 220 kilos of downforce at 300 k's an hour. The same goes for that big front splitter and these louvered guards. They help generate another 110 kilos at the same speed. Almost all the bodywork is exotic. The bonnet, engine lid and these front guards, well they're carbon fibre but the roof goes one step better. It's a millimetre thick slice of magnesium that helps shave almost a kilo off the carbon fibre equivalent. Now that's what I call attention to detail, but then that's what this 911 is all about. For the first time, the extra wide body comes from the 911 Turbo, as no other version was capable of housing the formidable 21 inch rear wheels and equally massive 32530 Michelin Pilot Sport Cup 2 tyres. It's a difficult car to describe. On the one hand it's a street car for the racetrack and on the other it's a race car for the street. Either way, this is the 911 that all others are measured by, and for the first time, I get to drive it. There's massive power from that engine. There's a newly developed 4-litre flat 6 under the rear lid with a longer stroke shorter connecting rods and a crankshaft made of high purity steel only found in aviation and formula one and it's those that allow this engine to get up to 8800 rpm quite easily Hop into a GT3 RS. Listen to that. Nothing like it. Absolutely nothing like it. Wind it out and there's 368 kilowatts and 460 newton meters arriving at 6250 RPM. Like most track ready supercars these days, there's no manual transmission option. Instead favoring Porsche's sublime seven speed dual clutch system known as the PDK. And I don't mind that one bit. That said, there's an awful lot of racing tech underneath this car to help keep it firmly planted, even at the limit. And it all starts with Michelin's brilliant Pilot Sport Cup 2 tyres that provide seemingly limitless levels of grip once they're warmed up. On top of that, there's rear axle steering, torque vectoring and a variable rear axle dip lock that combine to provide crazy levels of agility. The wider front and rear tracks enable even greater roll stability than the GT3, meaning Higher cornering speed. Yeah, you wind it up and it's really quick. Clearly, the GT3 RS is a car with serious intent, but climb aboard and it's nothing like what you might expect from Porsche's most formidable road legal racer. This is definitely no stripped out track day 911, and it's a real surprise. Almost the entire cockpit is upholstered in high-end Alcantara and supple leather, as well as plenty of beautifully finished carbon fibre inlays on the dash and centre console. 
The carbon fibre back seats are truly race car like and offer a good deal of comfort even after a few hours behind the wheel. It really is a faultless instrument of power, precision and emotion, one that is totally, totally addictive. And that 4 litre flat 6 lays claim to one of the best 911 engine notes you're likely to hear this side of a factory Le Mans entry. There's only one thing left to say about the Porsche GT3 RS. It's the purest driver experience on the planet, at least from a road car. It's like the whole car is hardwired to every single motor neuron in your body. Wow.